So how can we calculate the speed of a satellite that is moving in a circular orbit at a height of 3,800 kilometers above the surface of the Earth? So let's draw a picture. So we're going to say this is the Earth. And here is a satellite that orbits the Earth. OK, maybe I could draw a better picture. What can we do to find the speed of that satellite? Well, first, we need to derive an equation. This satellite has a centripetal force. Any object that moves with circular motion has a centripetal force. And it turns out that gravity provides the centripetal force in this example. This force is the gravitational force that keeps it moving in a circle. So we're going to set the force of gravity equal to the centripetal force. And let's say that the satellite has a mass lowercase m and the Earth has a mass capital M. So to calculate the gravitational force between two objects, it's g times the mass of the Earth times the mass of the satellite divided by the square distance between the centers of the Earth and the satellite. The centripetal force acting on the satellite, because the satellite is moving in a circle, is going to be the mass times the square of the speed divided by the radius. So what we can do is cancel m. And if we multiply both sides by r, we can cancel an r. So we're left with gm over r is equal to v squared. So now we need to take the square root of both sides. So the speed of a satellite is the square root of the universal gravitation constant times the mass of the Earth divided by the distance between their centers. Now let's think about what we already know. We know the gravitational constant is a fixed number. We have the mass of the Earth. Now what is r in this problem? What should we replace r with? r is not the radius of the Earth, and it's not the height above the surface of the Earth. It's actually the sum of those two values. So let me draw a better picture to illustrate it. So let's say this is the Earth, and this is the satellite. So first, we have the radius of the Earth, which is 6.38 times 10 to the 6 meters. And we have the height of the satellite above the surface of the Earth, which is 3,800 kilometers. To add these two, we need to make sure that the unit matches. So one kilometer is 1,000 meters. So 3,800 kilometers, that's 3.8 million meters. You've got to multiply this by 1,000. So that's equivalent to 3.8 times 10 to the 6 meters. So r is the sum of these two numbers. So if we add 6.38 times 10 to the 6 plus 3.8 times 10 to the 6, that's equal to 1.018 times 10 to the 7 meters. So r is the distance between the center of the Earth and the center of the satellite. Now we can use the formula. So we have g, the gravitational constant, 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11, multiplied by the mass of the Earth, which is 5.97 times 10 to the 24, divided by r, which is 1.018 times 10 to the 7 meters. So the speed of the satellite, let me erase a few things.
the speed of the satellite is 6,254.3 meters per second. So that's how fast it's going. Now that we have the speed, what is the period of the satellite in hours? So what do you think we need to do in order to calculate the period? So let's say this is the Earth and this is the satellite. The satellite travels around the Earth and it's moving at constant speed. Whenever you have an object moving at constant speed, you can use this equation. D is equal to VT. So V is D over T. The distance around the circle is the circumference, which is 2 pi r. And the time it takes to complete one revolution or one cycle around the circle is the period. Now, we need to solve for t. So I'm going to multiply both sides by t. So vt is equal to 2 pi r. And dividing both sides by v, the period is 2 pi r over v. And we have the r value. The r value is this number. So the period is going to be the circumference, 2 pi times 1.018 times 10 to the 7, divided by the speed of the satellite, which is 6254.3 meters per second. So you should get 10,000 and 227 seconds. Now let's convert that into hours. So there's 60 seconds in a minute and there's 60 minutes in one hour. So we could cancel the unit seconds and minutes. So it's 10,227 divided by 60 and divided by 60 again. So the period is about 2.84 hours. So that's how long it's going to take for this satellite to orbit the Earth at this speed and at this orbital radius. Now let's move on to our second question. A geosynchronous satellite is one that stays above the same point on the equator of the Earth. What is the period of such a satellite in seconds? So let's say if this satellite stays at the same point. So it's going to rotate at the same rate as the Earth rotates. It's going to have the same angular speed. Now it takes the Earth 24 hours to rotate on its internal axis. So the satellite is going to take 24 hours for the satellite to revolve around the Earth. Make sure you understand the difference between rotation and revolution. When an object rotates, it rotates about its internal axis. So like the Earth, it has its own internal axis that it rotates around. Now the satellite revolves around an external axis, which is basically the axis of the Earth, but that's outside of the satellite, so it's external. So the satellite traveling around the Earth, it's revolving. The Earth spinning on its own axis, it's rotating. So what is the period of that satellite? So as we mentioned, it takes 24 hours for the Earth to rotate on its own axis. So for a geosynchronous satellite, it's going to be 24 hours for it to revolve around the Earth. Now we need to convert that into seconds. So one hour is equal to 60 minutes, and one minute is equivalent to 60 seconds. So it's 24 times 60 times another 60. So it's 86,400 seconds. So that's the period. Now let's move on to part B. What is the satellite's height 
above the surface of the Earth in kilometers. So how can we use the period to calculate the height of the satellite? So let's draw a picture. So let's say this is the Earth and this is the satellite. So let's say that lowercase r is the radius of the Earth and h is the height of the satellite. Capital R is the distance between the center of the Earth and the center of the satellite. Our goal is to calculate h, the height above the surface of the Earth. So let's write this. r is equal to h plus lowercase r. Now somehow, we need an equation that relates the period with r. So let's see if we can come up with such an equation. Now recall that we said the speed of the satellite is the square root of gm over r. And we're going to use that equation for part c. But we don't know what r is, so we're going to find that first. Now v squared is going to be gm over r without the square root. And recall in the last problem that v is 2 pi r over t. So I'm going to replace the v with 2 pi r over t. So I'm going to have 2 pi r over the period, and that's squared, and that's equal to gm over r. So 2 squared is 4, so we're going to have 4 pi squared r squared over t squared is equal to gm over r. And now I'm running out of space. So let's get rid of some stuff. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cross multiply. So I'm going to have 4 pi squared times r cubed. That's r squared times r. And on the right side, gm times t squared. So I can leave the equation like this. Or I could solve for r. So I'm going to do that. So r cubed is going to be gm t squared over 4 pi squared. And then taking the cube root of both sides, r is going to be the cube root of gm t squared over 4 pi squared. So this equation allows me to calculate the radius of the orbit if I know the period. So this is going to be the cube root of g, which is 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 times the mass of the Earth, which you can find it based on the last problem. That's 5.97 times 10 to the 24. And then multiply by the period, which is 86,400. And don't forget to square it. And all of this will be divided by 4 pi squared. You may want to put this in parentheses. Taking the cube root is the same as raising it to the one-third power. So you should have an r value of 4.22 times 10 to the 7 meters. But we're not quite finished yet. We need to find the height. So the height is going to be the radius of the orbit minus the radius of the Earth. So that's going to be 4.22 times 10 to the 7. And then minus the radius of the Earth, which is in the last problem, 6.38 times 10 to the 6 meters. So 
So this is equal to 3.58 times 10 to the 7 meters. Now let's convert that to kilometers. So there's 1,000 meters per kilometer. So we get to divide that by 1,000. And so it's 35,800 kilometers. So that's how high this satellite is above the surface of the Earth. Now the last thing that we need to do is we need to calculate the speed of the satellite. So let's go back to this equation. So we have G, we have the mass of the Earth, 5.97 times 10 to the 24, and the orbital radius is 4.22 times 10 to the 7. That's the distance between the center of the Earth and the center of the satellite. So the speed of the satellite is 3,072 meters per second. And so that's it for this video. So now you know how to calculate the speed of the satellite, the satellite's height above the surface of the Earth, and also the period of the satellite if you need to. Thanks for watching.